Welcome! If you are looking for ways to get through this summer without overly heating up your house, today is the day that we're going to share with you some of our best chicken marinades that can be cooked either in the slow cooker or on the barbecue so that you don't get that sweltering heat from your oven. These really are our best marinades and definitely our favorites. And our first one that we have is our honey mustard chicken burgers. And I have some in my freezer right now and I'm so excited about them because I had two bags and now I have one bag left. So I've kind of been saving it because do you do that? Do you do that when you save something in your freezer that you're looking forward to? Totally. Yeah. I've got ones that I'm like saving for one of those days when I just really want comfort food or where I want something that is like restaurant quality or like the chicken burgers are, are one that you would save for a day when it's hot out and you want to have a great barbecue. Uh, totally. And the other one I'm saving and you're going to be super jealous because I think you're out. <laughs> it's the chicken street tacos and those are coming up later. So make sure you stay oh, tuned. Oh, I am jealous. <laughs> You're right. I don't have any more of those. We will get to that, so stick with us. But first, we're going to do the honey mustard chicken burgers. Into your large resealable freezer bag, you're going to add four chicken breasts that have been split open and they've been cut in half to make eight burgers. <laughs> then you're going to add in some Dijon mustard, some liquid honey, Italian seasoning, some red pepper flakes, and a bit of salt. You're going to mix that around right in your bag. We're not even going to use a bowl for this. We're no dishes, no dishes happening here. And this is just dump and make. We're going to get that excess air out of the bag. We're going to seal it up and then we'll freeze it. On the day of cooking, so here's the nice thing. As it thaws, it marinates. And then we are going to take those chicken burgers and we're going to pop them right onto the barbecue and cook them up over like medium heat, five minutes per side. Use your meat thermometer, people. If you haven't got one, go get one. Just a cheap one from Amazon. We have one in our Amazon store, link in the description below, that it is really a game changer when it comes to cooking chicken if you haven't been in the habit of using one. I know. Don't overcook my chicken quite as badly as I used to. I was totally overcooking my chicken, and now my chicken is much better. And I've even converted Charla, and that was a hard convert. Yes, and it wasn't change. And I wasn't even trying to convert you. I said, Charla, I don't care if you ever do it, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. And you just told me about it so much. So much. <laughs> that I finally, you know, took the plunge. And I'm a little bit excited about it. And then you're going to just dress this up like a regular burger. You can put whatever you want on it, like some red onion, or you could lettuce, tomato, pickles, whatever you like. Now, if you don't have a barbecue or you don't want to use your barbecue or you're out of propane and you still just have to have these, you can totally fry these up in your skillet. Or you could probably do them in the broiler, but then, you know, we're getting in that turning in the turning on the oven territory and we don't necessarily want that when it is super hot outside. These are great for a backyard barbecue. Oh yeah. And they're a little bit different than what you might be expecting when you're hearing like marinated chicken recipes, right? Oh, totally. Like this isn't your typical freezer meal, but let me tell you, it is one of the best freezer meals. And when you're doing chicken marinades, it's nice to have some variety because mm -hmm. they are so fast to put together. One thing that we're going to suggest to you is you can pick and choose from these recipes or, I mean, we have a lot, freezermeals101.com if you're looking for a ton of ideas. Just click the chicken button and you'll see a whole bunch of recipes. But choose the ones you like and then make a whole bunch at one time. You can make probably 20 bags in an hour, like 20 meals in an hour for marinades. Oh yeah. You open your bags on your counter or your island or kitchen table if you want it to be lower. You're going to open all of your bags first and then you're going to put chicken in every bag. And then wash your hands. <laughs> because yes, you have yucky chicken hands now. <laughs> and then you can start assembling each bag and you know sealing and closing as you go. But another thing that we recommend if you want to make it that fast where you can just like literally dump and go is that you have all of your ingredients out so that you're not you know searching through the pantry and going to the fridge and going back and forth i mean if you wanting to get in like a lot of steps and you're like on your watch tracking your steps maybe you want to keep the 
ingredients in the fridge and just go back and forth and back and forth. Totally can do that. But if you want to save time <laughs> and make this as fast as possible. Um, <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. Totally. Get your ingredients out first. Walk around your kitchen with the recipes, grab all those ingredients, have everything ready. And another little trick to save you time is you want to put the bags next to each other where you're going to have like ingredients. So mm -hmm. if you were doing like the honey mustard chicken burgers next to our um, Dijon chicken or chicken, we've got a, another, we've got a couple chick, uh, mustard. Yes. Like a lemon mustard chicken. Yes, that's the one I was looking mm -hmm. for. Lemon mustard chicken. You would put those bags next to each other because you know, or if you've got like Asian inspired You're going to need your soy sauce and your sesame oil and your rice vinegar yes. all together. Then it just saves you a little bit of extra time and it all adds up. So it really there's does. our time saving tips. <laughs> there's your time saving tips for the day. Our next marinade is our citrus chicken. For this one, into your bag, you're gonna have your boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and then you're gonna add some honey garlic sauce. We just use a VH1, but whatever brand you want is fine. Then you're gonna add some orange juice. Then you're gonna add some red wine, or you can use a red cooking wine if you prefer some brown sugar, just a tiny little bit. Then you're gonna add some ginger. We like to use our ginger from a squeezy tube. Then a bit of pepper, some Mrs. Dash extra spicy seasoning, and minced garlic. We like to use our garlic from a jar because it's already minced. So between that and your squeezy tube ginger, you save a little bit of extra time. Then you're gonna squish all those ingredients together right there in the bag to combine them. You're gonna get out your extra air because air can lead to freezer burn. Then you're gonna seal it and freeze it. On the day you go to make this, you can do it in the skillet, or you can do it in the oven, but we are gonna do it in the slow cooker this time because we don't wanna heat our house up for the summer. So you're just going to thaw it and cook it on low for four to six hours. Now with this one, I would probably recommend serving it with a side of rice and some vegetables. Some of these steamed vegetables would be That'd great. Be really good. Mm -hmm. I have a little story about rice. <laughs> <laughs> Who has a story about rice? This one, go on. <laughs> story about anything. <laughs> I do tend to be a little chatty. That's just fine. Anyway, okay, so two nights ago I made our Hawaiian chicken sheet pan. Now that recipe is not in this video but I will put the recipe in the description below this video in case you're interested in checking that out. Oh, it's good. Yeah, you know, it's a sheet pan so you're gonna turn your oven on. But it's ready very quickly because the chicken is cubed and everything just goes right on your sheet pan, so less dishes. It's beautiful, but it's definitely one that you want to serve on rice. So I had that in the oven and about partway through, because you take it out and you add pineapple and put it back in, I was like, I gotta get my rice going. I'm just gonna make minute rice. So like, it just needs five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> it's so, I had 10 minutes left, no problem. I got measured out my water got it boiling, and went to grab my minute rice, and um, it was gone because <laughs> I was recently away, and my family used the rest of it while I was gone. <laughs> they didn't know, and you know, they don't add things onto the grocery list <laughs> like I do. So looking, and I had jasmine rice, I had converted rice, and I had this little bag of wild rice, and it didn't have much left, and so I was just being prudent, like I'll just use that up so I can get rid of it. Now, did you combine rices? Like, nope. I've done it before where I've wanted to make the long, like white rice with a bit of the wild rice in. No, you just straight up wild rice. I just okay. straight up wild rice. I, 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 I know where this is going. Do you know where this is going? Cause I have made this mistake. <laughs> Carry on. I read the package, but I did not read the full package. I just read the amount that I would need to put in for the amount of water that was already boiling on the stove. Totally logical. Completely, right? Totally logical. So I stirred it in and then continued because I wanted to see like how long I need to set the timer for, right? Thinking like I've got 10 minutes of this chicken still in my oven, so I've got plenty of time. Actually, that's not true. I figured that it would have a cook time that was similar to like the converted rice or the jasmine rice. So I figured like it might be 20 minutes, which 
puts it being done at 10 minutes after the meal that it's, it's not the end of the world, right? The meal's still gonna be hot, it's gonna be fine. No big deal. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. <laughs> 45 minutes. To cook wild rice. Which is 35 minutes, I'm gonna math here. <laughs> 35 minutes past when the chicken's gonna be done. <laughs> so my family had two dinners. They had like the, the chicken, vegetables, and fruit with pineapple. Right. And later, some of them went back, because they like rice, some of them went back and had just plain wild rice. <laughs> I, I would go back for the wild rice. I do really like it. But there was a period in my life where I stopped making it because it was a hassle. And yes. I do like to, I like the mix because I find a wild rice on its own very wild. <laughs> it's, it's too much. It's too much. I, I yeah. remember buying or seeing a blend mm -hmm. in the grocery store and I'm like, I don't know what they did to that. It must be parboiled. It must be something mm -hmm. for it to all be ready at the same time. Cause I had used that and I really liked it. Well, then I got myself a steamer Okay. Yeah. and it was one of those maybe it was a wedding gift to be honest so this is a while ago so it's a standalone thing it has two racks and you can steam you know your vegetables on one and your fish in the other like it was actually really cool but they had this little pocket in it and you could put tin foil over it and steam your rice while you were had and then you put your vegetables in around it so it does all the things so you could have a whole meal i maybe honestly it sounds like an infomercial i probably bought it on the shopping channel like at two in the morning television. because you could have your whole meal done in this one device <laughs> this is obviously prior to you discovering freezer meals it's very very early in my marriage and i was just finding honestly any way to make cooking easier mm -hmm. which i have now found the holy grail of making cooking easier by free, doing freezer meals but yes, so I had, I had made it with the package, and then so I'm like, that was expensive. I'll make my own blend. Right. And that stuff's crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the white rice was fine. The wild rice was just straight up crunchy. And so whatever we had that night, we just didn't have rice with it. So I learned very, much earlier on in my cooking experience than you did. I, and I went, you had the rice. You must have cooked it at one time, and maybe you forgot. No, you and I added it into a soup. <gasps> soup. It was like a turkey, lemon, wild rice yes, soup. Yes, it was. Yeah. I remember. So I had never made like wild rice. five minute wild rice. Even brown rice throws you off because it's like 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's like a... Now, hands up out there if you own a rice cooker. I have never owned one in my life. No, and me neither. People, people who are... Okay, I'm almost converted that I should buy a rice cooker. Cause people are like, you just set it and forget it. And it's so easy, but I do pretty well cooking rice on the stove. And I don't feel like I need another appliance in my life. I agree. And I mean, I usually do Jasmine or basmati rice mm, me too. more often than minute rice, but it was one of those days. And it was like a really full busy day Yeah, and dinner's done easily. And I just wanted to make it easy and um, yeah. Anyway, so join us next time for more Rice Tales with Charlotte and Christy. <laughs> I have another rice story, but we can tell it at the end. We should get to another recipe. Okay. There is a recipe that is, it's a newer one, but it is just like rising in the ranks for us because <laughs> it's so good and it's different than a lot of our recipes. It is our Korean barbecue chicken. It's right in the name. You can cook this on the barbecue. And that's, I think, the only place we've done ours. Us too, yeah. It was amazing. We've had it several times now. <laughs> Just wanna keep making it because it's so good. This is made with goju chang paste. If you can't find it in your regular grocery store, you can often find it in the Asian food section in your grocery store. If you can't, you may need to go to a specialty store or order it online, but I can tell you it is worth it's it. It's worth it. Oh, the first time, like we were a little, not suspicious or like we just, we didn't know what it was going to be like, mm -hmm. but it is like, it's exciting. Oh. It's exciting in your mouth. That's like my favorite way to explain something that I don't know how to explain. It is it's, exciting in your mouth. It's totally exciting in your mouth. It's so good and just so different than anything else that we have. And you'll also find 
like now I'm starting now that I know about it I'm starting to see it so now I see it in like wings places or yes. drumsticks or like there was even a goju tang barbecue sauce at the regular grocery store that I'm like oh it's like a thing we need to try more recipes we need to make more goju tang paste I hope I'm pronouncing that right if I'm not I'm sorry for butchering it Anyway, hey, we learned how to say Worcestershire, so like if we are doing it wrong, let us know and we'll try to fix it. We're not, we're humble. <laughs> yes, we, we recently had a video, I can't even remember what the word was, but it was like I was saying it completely different than how you thought it should be oh, said. Oh, like, yeah. But you didn't know either, and it's like, so hopefully, you know, yeah. you usually tell us in the comments. You usually let us know. Yeah, that was funny, but I can't remember what the word was. That's okay. <laughs> to start, you're going to put your chicken thighs in your large freezer bag. Then in a bowl, you're going to mix together some low-sodium soy sauce, goju chang paste, honey, brown sugar, sesame oil, rice wine. You want to make sure that it's not rice wine vinegar, but actual rice wine. Then some minced ginger from a squeezy tube and some of that minced garlic from a jar. Just mix that all together in the bowl. And then you're going to pour half a cup of that sauce into a quart size freezer bag. And you're going to pour the rest over top of that chicken and then just squish it together to coat the chicken. You're going to get the air out of both bags, seal them, and then you're going to staple it together above the seal. That way you'll have everything you need on the day of cooking. If you want to make this in the oven, you can. You can do it in the skillet or on the barbecue. So for today, we're talking summer and we're going to do barbecue. So you're going to do this on your grill, covered for five to seven minutes on each side. Again, you're going to want to make sure that that internal temperature of 165 degrees is reached with your meat thermometer. And you can use the sauce that's in your medium size freezer bag as a glaze or as a dip. You can garnish this one with some sliced green onions and sesame seeds if you want, no matter what you serve this with. It's amazing. You could rub dirt on it and it would still be <laughs> delicious. It's just good. It's so good. If we have not convinced you to try this Korean barbecue chicken by this point, well, it's just not for you. Now, they're going to have a question. Is it spicy? Uh, not overly. It it's has got a kick. Mm -hmm. My family eats it well, and my family is not a spicy family. Charlotte's family does much better with the spice, and my family thought it was delicious. So. I would say give it a try. Mm -hmm. This next recipe is probably, it's been in one of our top 10 every year. Like, it's just, well it hasn't like officially made it into the top 10, but we just really love it. It's like an honorary top 10. I think when we did our top 12 videos or top 10 videos, it has definitely made it into my top in those videos. Both times? No, just the one because this last time, this last year, I tried to only choose recipes that, that were new for the year. Yes. Oh, that's right. So if it wasn't that, if it wasn't because it was new for the year, it still would have been in there. Yes. Because if this is barbecue shredded chicken, it is just a dump and go, but my goodness, is it out of this world fantastic. You would not believe that this is a freezer meal. In your bag, you're going to add your boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You're going to add in on top of that minced onion, minced garlic from your jar, a whole bottle of your favorite barbecue sauce, it can be any kind you like, and some apple cider vinegar. We're going to mix that all together and that's going to make just a beautiful marinade, a beautiful sauce. We're going to get that excess air out, we're going to seal it up and freeze it. On the day you go to cook this, this is definitely a perfect one for your slow cooker, for your instant pot. It just cooks up beautifully, you want to shred it, and you're going to have it like a pulled pork sandwich where you're going to put it on your bun with your garlic mayo, and then the, then the chicken and a little bit of coleslaw on. You want to get the crunch in there. This is just summer in a bag. I remember years ago, you and I did this in one of our mega sessions. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pop, for those of you that don't know what our mega sessions are, we make like over 100 meals at a time, sometimes over 150. Uh, I'm going to pop a link right there to one of them so you can see the madness. But we did this 
in our mega session and yeah. we always make four of any trying mm -hmm. true recipes in those and we tried different barbecue yes, sauces we did. in each one yeah. and we wrote on it yeah. what the flavor of barbecue and did sauce was the winner. It, they were all good. They were all good. And it was like, it really showed us how much you can change the flavor of this just by changing the barbecue sauce. Because some were spicier varieties. Mm -hmm. And there was one that was like a tequila lime one right. or something. And there's like the smokier flavored barbecue sauce. Like, you can really change it up. So even within this recipe, there's you, variety. Yes. Yes. And usually my favorite barbecue sauce is the one that's on sale. <laughs> I'm not Agreed. that picky. I'm really not that picky about it. But there are people that like, you know, you could do this with your homemade barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. If you have, you know, your family recipe or whatever, there are like grand connoisseurs out there that would have wonderful barbecue sauces to put with this. One time, I want to say the second time we made this, I made it and I put way too much vinegar in. Mm -hmm. You, yeah, it's true. Was it in both or was it just in mine? I wonder if I just did it in one of mine. It was in both. It was in both. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, it was very vinegary. It was. Oh, it was a different kind of excitement in your mouth. <laughs> and uh, and I, my family was kind of like, oh, what have you done? And we 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 shied away from it for a while. And my husband was like, no more shredded things. And I'm like, it's not about the shredding. It's because I mixed, messed it up. And so, anyway, we're back to enjoying it again. So follow the recipe, folks. This past Canada Day, uh, we went to friends of ours, and he was making a pulled pork, and he made a homemade barbecue sauce mm. for it. But it was really interesting to watch him, because he just, like, in a skillet on the stove, he just grabbed ingredients <laughs> and was, like, squeezing them in and mixing, like, not measuring anything. And I'm kind of that kind of cook, but not as confident as he was with this. He must have done this a million times because he just knew. He was he like, no, look, a little more, oh, it doesn't quite look right. You gotta add more of this and more of that, you know? And anyway, it was a really, really good pulled pork. A little different than pulled chicken, but you were saying homemade barbecue sauce, and I was like, I've never done it, but you well, can. We have a lot of recipes that end up with a homemade barbecue yeah. sauce. Well, like same as the homemade teriyaki, right? Like. It's you know, true. you're going to have the soy sauce and some sugar and some vinegar and it will become the thing. Mm -hmm. And so this is the same thing for the barbecue sauce. But there are some like secret recipes out there. Yes, there are. Yeah. Or like the barbecue champions. I love that kind of stuff. We know two of them. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. We... Oh, I know another family. Oh, that does the barbecue that, circuit. That did the circuit for a long mm -hmm. time. Yes. All right. So this is not on the barbecue circuit but it is certainly in our backyard barbecue circuit at the moment. It's and in the neighborhood circuit. This, this <laughs> is our street chicken tacos. The uh, one recipe that Christy was talking about at the beginning of this video. Oh, like this uh, is, I, I guarantee, guarantee that this will make it in our top 10, our top 10, 12, whatever of this current year. Absolutely. For new recipes. Mm -hmm. Like this hands down, this is making it. And if you missed it, this comes from the Costco street chicken tacos. We did a copycat video. We'll pop it there. We did an entire video of straight up Costco copycats and they were all good, but this mm -hmm. was the winner. Yes. Yes. Uh, the beef bulgogi or whatever it was. That the beef bulgogi that was good. Very good as well. And actually you nailed the, sam the stuffed salmon, mm -hmm. which you didn't end up eating. No, but I did, and it was like, it was just like j check that video out. Because Listen, our, <laughs> freezer meals can be delicious. You don't understand. Freezer meals are delicious. They they're, can be way more gourmet than you have ever ever imagined. They're not they're, just casseroles. No, not here anyway. Not here. <laughs> no ma'am. All right. So for your street chicken tacos, Costco coffee cat. You're going to add your boneless, skinless chicken thighs into your large freezer bag. Then you're going to add in some orange juice, cider vinegar, lime juice, garlic from a jar, chipotle chili powder, oregano, smoked paprika, cinnamon, salt, and pepper. Squish that all around to combine it. Get out your extra air, seal it, freeze it. On the day you go to make this, you want to thaw it, and then you're going to grease or spray your grill with cooking spray. 
Then you're gonna take the chicken out of the marinade and you're gonna just cook it for four to five minutes on each side on medium heat or of course until your chicken reaches an internal temperature of 165. You're going to roughly chop your chicken and then you're gonna serve it in some small flour tortillas with cabbage slaw, salsa, crema, and you can even use some lime wedges to just squeeze your fresh lime on top. And just like that, you've got homemade Costco chicken street tacos. I don't know if I said that right, but. I think you totally <laughs> did. We will do the, the sriracha mayo. Mm. If we don't have any, I will quickly make some and drizzle it on. And that is also really, really great with it. One thing that I have been doing lately with mayo, it happened because we were doing pork carnitas and it, I, like, it's just what I whipped up as I was about to serve my pork carnitas. Also a great recipe that's new to us this year. But I did a Cajun mayo. So it's oh. like with Cajun, um, a little, I think it's got maybe a little bit of hot sauce in there, mm -hmm. some lime, some salt and pepper. Oh, that's good. That's really good. That would be really good. So it might also go well with this, but I can see the sriracha yeah. mayo working as well. Yeah, or Valentina's. Mm -hmm. Not always sriracha, but like just hot sauce in general with the mayo. It just, and my kids are getting into it. So like how we're not a spicy family, like we're graduating into spiciness. And my son asked me for a spicy chicken burger. So they Ooh. must be, they serve them at the hot lunch at school. Okay. And he's like, I had one, I would really like that. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. And so we got the breaded chicken burgers. Like I, mm -hmm. I should have used the honey mustard, no. But that isn't what he wanted. He wanted yeah. the crispy kind. And so I, I got them, we tried it. He loves it with the sauce on it. And so they're getting there. They're getting there. Spice tolerance is something that you can increase. Mm -hmm. And you can increase it a lot by just continually pushing yourself just a little. And then make it a little spicier next time, and then a little spicier. And before you know it, you can eat pretty much anything. Uh, this next one is an oldie but a goodie. Honestly, it is kind of like the quintessential sauce with the chicken because every mother in America and Canada, we're Canadian, has probably made this at some point in their lives or some version of this. And it's called Chicken Hurry. And we had it in cookbooks mm -hmm. by, it was called Companies Coming, and it was a Canadian cookbook series, but they went worldwide. So this recipe really is everywhere, but here is our version. In your bag, you're going to add your chicken thighs, or you can do chicken breast. We're going to add in half a cup of ketchup, some water, some brown sugar, some onion soup mix, and that's it. You're going to mix these around in the bag, seal it up and freeze it. And when you go to cook this, this is a great one for the barbecue. This does really well in a skillet. It does really well in a slow cooker, and you can also do it in the oven if you need to. But because we're trying to keep our kitchens cool, we're gonna talk about barbecuing today. We want to reserve that liquid, and so just take the chicken out as it's, you know, it's marinated as it's thawed, Get it onto your barbecue. We're just cooking it over medium, four to five minutes per side. Again, checking it with that meat thermometer. In the meantime, that reserved liquid, we can put it in the stove top and heat it up. Now, it will start to thicken, or if you want to thicken it even more, you can do a cornstarch slurry, which is like when you take a tablespoon of your cornstarch, mix it in with cold water, just, just a little bit, like a quarter cup maybe. Mix it around really well and add it in, and that will thicken it up let it bubble away for a few minutes, and then you can serve that as a sauce or as a glaze on your chicken when it's done. Now, this is five ingredients or less. It is super simple. It is not the healthiest one that we have here today. No, it is not. But it's also not awful either. Like, you can have it once in a while, and it is totally good. Kids will love this one. Super kid-friendly. Very kid-friendly. And Charlotte has a video way back in the day where you were showing people how to stretch soup how to take your leftovers and make soup and i wonder if you could find that i don't know it was a long time ago it was a really long time ago but if i can find it i'll put it there yeah if i can then it'll be like blank right up there it's okay <laughs> but you use the chicken hurry which i think what uh, when i first heard that i'm like that's really weird because it's sweet right like it's and got a sweet sauce all the sauce She's in scraping the, the yeah. sauce out of the pan into the soup, and I have since done it because that was 
a long time ago. I've had mm -hmm. a chance to use my chicken hurry leftovers and it does taste really good in a soup. It is a different soup. I know. There's that undertone of sweetness in it that you wouldn't really expect, but it, it wasn't terrible. It was good. wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. <laughs> what a glowing recommendation. I just said it was good. It, it wasn't, wasn't terrible. Just another way of saying it was good. That's what we're going for now. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible. terrible. Freezer meals made into soup. Not terrible. <laughs> as a tagline on your thumbnail. <laughs> Not terrible. Not terrible. <laughs> I was recently at this thing, you know how I said that my, while I was gone, my family used all the minute rice and didn't let me know. <laughs> Not that it's like that much of a, it's not like it's a sin or something, but you know. <laughs> they used all the rice. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's because I was at this business thing in Idaho, which I've never been to Idaho before, but I was at this business thing in Idaho. Oh my goodness, where was I going with this? I'm thinking weird soup. Uh, Chicken hurry. Oh yeah, okay, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Nothing to do with any of that, but oh. all right. So I was explaining about this, the Freezer Meals 101 Club. So in case you're not aware, it's like where you can take our tried and true freezer meal recipes. There's like over, I think it's like, we got to be getting, getting close, close to 400. 400 in there. And you can make your own meal plan and it, generates from your meal plan, your shopping list, your prep list, and then you've got printable labels with the cooking instructions. And now we've recently added like a monthly live cooking class so that we can literally like cook with you and mm -hmm. do this together so that you can really actually get it done and not just have intentions of getting it done. So I was explaining this to them and showing them and I pulled it up, it was on a, a huge TV. I pulled up the page that's in the club that has all the recipes. And they were like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, I, those are not freezer meals. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah these are. are our freezer meals. And they're like, but, like, those don't look like mush. <laughs> like, that was, like, they were like, I thought freezer meals were all crock pot mm -hmm. and all, like, casserole stews and mushy slow cooker. And I'm like, you no. Know. We tend to, for our slow cooker meals, they tend to be like the pulled, you right. know, like the barbecue shredded chicken, like that kind of thing. We like that in the slow cooker because it's Not everything delicious. deserves, no. not everything is like slow cooker appropriate. Definitely not, you know, and we're like, we're all about flavor and texture and things like being exciting in your mouth. And so, no, when it comes to our freezer meals, I mean, this might not be the best video to showcase this in because we're doing chicken marinades, which you could imagine would be a freezer meal. But we're talking like we have so much variety mm -hmm. and there is no, you know, we've got our like Thai chili chicken lettuce wrap. So that, like that makes a beautiful photo and not what you would expect, not what people are thinking. Right. When they think freezer meals. Actually, we have so many that are because I like to push the edges as yes. what is possible. Yes, you do. And it doesn't always work out, which is those recipes don't make it into the club. They're not in the club. And we've recently had some fails. We've had some fails, but... Um, because I'm pushing you. Because over. you're pushing. But it's okay, because this is how we find the, the gems, mm -hmm. for sure. And sometimes our gems come from um, just complete out of her brain of I think this is a good idea or this is the ingredients that we have left after one of our mega sessions and I'm just gonna invent something and we'll see how it goes and we have had some real winners out of that one definitely yeah some of our best for sure so if you are new around here you really should check out the freezer meals 101 club there's a link in the description below and just go and see just go and see because you think it's gonna be easy to just take five or six or ten recipes and mark it all down and make your grocery list and and then your prep list and you're gonna do all that prep it is not really as easy as you think it's going to be there's and a better way this takes all the all the mental energy out for you it just does the work for you now we don't visit your kitchen. We do in the form of being on the video and doing the live cooking class with you. We now visit your kitchens in that way, but we don't come and like actually assemble the meals in your kitchen. Yes. But we take the rest of the work out of it for you. All the thinking stuff, the planning. The planning, because it's all right there. Mm -hmm. Now we just were talking about 
icky, mushy, slow cooker meals. And I'm about to give you a slow cooker meal that is anything but that. Because again, this is a shredded meat. And I really do feel like when it comes to the slow cooker, that's where it shines. Mm -hmm. Like that. That and soups and stuff, but it really does a nice job of getting that meat just tender mm -hmm. to shred. Easy mm -hmm. to shred. <laughs> Nobody likes something that is difficult to shred. So this is our zippy shredded chicken tacos. <laughs> and for this, it is again a five ingredients or less recipe. All you're going to do is just dump and go into your large freezer bag, add your boneless skinless chicken breasts, some taco seasoning, you can either use a packet or you can use four tablespoons if you buy it in bulk or make your own. Then you're gonna use about half a packet, two tablespoons of dry ranch seasoning and a can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. That is seriously it, squish it together again. You're gonna get out your extra air, seal it, freeze it. On the day you're gonna make this, thaw it, dump that into your slow cooker and when it's done shred it with a fork and you're going to serve this on top of your nachos or in your tacos and of course you're going to this this one actually usually some of our taco recipes we have so many taco <laughs> recipes because we love we do it. love tacos uh but they're all different they're all incredibly different and oh, and i be really hard pressed to pick a favorite. I mean, we just said the street chicken tacos are so good, but this one is like it's saucier, right much, mm -hmm. much saucier, flavorful, and it is, yes, it's up there. So, and might even be like, whatever. I don't want to pick a favorite. Mm -hmm. And and again, we have so many. And I'll pick a favorite. I do like the chicken street tacos better. Here. You know, so, so what I was trying to say is like, sometimes we recommend that you use flour, you know this like in the street chicken tacos we had we said the small flour tortillas right this one i feel personally goes best in a crispy taco shell right or on top of nachos so you can have a different opinion and you can try it with the flour tortillas and maybe that's going to be the winner for you i just personally feel because this is a saucier one that it goes better with the crunch or you can use the crispy taco shell and then wrap it in the flour tortilla mm -hmm. to get the best of both worlds because what that does, that's what my kids do, is you get the crunch, but you don't get the mess. It doesn't fall apart on you. <laughs> like it holds the it The flour in. tortilla holds it in. Yes. yes. So it's kind of that mix. And then all your taco fixings. So, you know, what we like here we tend to do tomato, jalapeno cilantro, cheese, um, lettuce, your family always does cabbage, mm -hmm. um, hot sauce, sour cream, uh, sometimes avocado or guacamole, you know, all the taco all the fixings. Things. You, there's so many, it's kind of unlimited. Right. Um, with this particular one, because it's a fairly big recipe, I mean, you mm -hmm. can feed a crowd and a half with this one. Yes, you can. Because we're just four in our family, I find I often have leftovers with it. I don't make it into soup. <laughs> that is that is passable or otherwise <laughs> um not terrible sorry passable is like, like a step down from not terrible that right. is what i meant it's at all not terrible that is not terrible i make my leftovers of this into chicken enchiladas mm, this would make great chicken right? enchiladas because mm -hmm. it's already got great flavor in it and then to pack it in with the enchilada sauce is like Yum. heaven it is really 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 great You've got great ideas. I have a ton of great ideas. My mind is a sieve these days, but the ideas just manage to poke through those holes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Perimenopause, folks. <laughs> I think we're having very um, descriptive discussions today about things in our life. <laughs> so true. So, hopefully we have given you some ideas for how to not heat your house but still eat delicious meals this summer. I know these were just chicken marinades and not a lot of variety in terms of the protein, but lots of variety in terms of all the options. Now, the best part about just giving you chicken marinades is, of course, find chicken on sale. Do this when you've got your chicken on sale. And if you want to pick and choose with some of our other chicken recipes, you can, of course, go into the club 
click the chicken tab and then all the chicken recipes will populate. You can even type in raw chicken into the keyword search and then you'll only get recipes that use raw chicken. There's all kinds of ways you can filter. You can then click the crock pot button or the barbecue button and filter it that way. So many options to make it easier for you. So check out the link for the Freezer Meals 101 Club in the description below and join us next time. We're gonna pop a video right over there of ground beef recipes because in case your chicken in case your chicken no chicken be chicken <laughs> okay let's try that all again so we are gonna pop a video right over there to some beef recipes because maybe you're sick of chicken after listening to us talk about chicken for like I don't know an hour or so Hey, who else in your life can talk about chicken for an hour? Well, I talked about rice for like, I don't know, six minutes or something. So, if you're looking for someone that can talk about food, you have found your girl. You really, really have. Thanks so much for joining us today. It was really fun. I hope you had fun too. Happy cooking. Bye.